Oh. Oh no. Um. This is not cool. The dog is so funny now. She, uh, when I come into the barn, I open the door and she stands at the door and she waits for me to say, like, you can come in. <laughs> so I don't know if I've scolded her or what, but, or she thinks she's a lady and I have to open the door for her and like motion for her to enter. She's so crazy. I love her. At four o'clock in the morning, I just love her as a companion. I really hate it when they sleep like that. It scares the you know what enemy. Guys, it looks like no no lambs second morning in a row. I think we definitely have hit the reprieve. The little break between cycles. There might be a few go in the next couple days, but I don't know. Maybe they're gonna give me Christmas week off. That'd be sweet. Today I still got some stuff going on. We kind of did something huge the, uh, two months ago. October, I think, was the first month. We hired my sister. She's a professional bookkeeper. And she lives like an hour and a half away. And I've never, I've just never approached her about doing the thing that Mark and I hate doing the most, which is, which is books, paying bills, reconciling, all those things. And uh, so finally one day I'm like, I said to Mark, I was sitting at the office and I was in tears because I'm like, I can't keep up with this. When we get busy in the fields, reconciling the account and the credit cards and all that stuff gets pushed off because you don't have to have it done. Like paying the bills gets done begrudgingly and late often. But the reconciling stuff, it takes me a long time to do it because I'm still like, I've been doing that for like two years now and I still have to, I have like a cheat sheet and I still have to go back to the cheat sheet because I just, it doesn't retain for me. It's like, bleh. so he came in the office and I'm like, this is just so overwhelming because I get so behind. So I think we were, I think I was four or five months behind reconciling and he's like, do you think your sister would do it for us? And I'm like, am I allowed to ask my sister? Is this one of those things? It's like the most obvious thing in the world. So I texted her right then before Mark could change his mind. And she's like, I've always wanted to offer, but she goes, I figured you just didn't ask for a reason. So it was the best decision we've ever made. And I never see my family, very rarely. Mom and dad, thank God, come and visit us. They drive, usually on a Sunday, they'll come up and see me. But unless it's like a holiday, I rarely make the trip east uh, to Paris where I grew up. Paris, Ontario where I grew up. And uh, so for me, it's nice to be able to see her at least once a month. So it's a little excuse. Uh, and she was here actually the day my roof blew off, which was just a gift from God because I kept my, I actually kept my composure, I think, because she was here. Just knowing that you had family around was was good. The only thing I need is a job for my older sister and then I would have the whole fam family here, which would be cool. I'm gonna take some milk out of this milk machine for my bottle baby. Looks okay. Right there. But I just want to make sure it drank. Okay, so drink a it drank, I think I only had about 300 mils in it, but it drank it right up. So we'll see. What do you smell? Just going around 
right now. Uh, I let a, a few sets of triplets out yesterday and those quads before I let them out. I'm gonna try to introduce a bottle because I gotta pull a couple off. Uh, Mom just can't support four lambs and I'm just gonna make sure these triplets are doing okay. They look like they're doing fine. Chris is doing chores. So nice. It's gonna be hard to pick anybody out, which is a good problem to have. Hmm, they don't look too interested. Sleepy, sleepy. So cute. So are you. Yeah, so I'll introduce the bottle to these guys, those guys, these guys, sorry, these guys, and then whoever I can find in this pen. But they look pretty good. Bouncing. I'm in my n more happy place now that my sister's doing my books. Say hi. Hey. 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 <laughs> I am. Oh, I didn't realize you were filming. Yeah, I'm filming. Um, catching up on emails because I'm really behind and I probably should just look at production records because I haven't done that in a while too. And then we'll go back out and check the barn in a little bit. I literally haven't been in the office since you were here last time. I just can't believe how fast you do it. Well, you gotta get it something, baby. <laughs> you sound like Mark. <laughs> you're good at some things. <laughs> like, you're good at everything. It's okay, honey. You're good at some things. He's trying to be sweet. Does it work? No. You can see right through him. So what job can we get Peg to do so she can come up too? <laughs> That's a good idea. I'll have to ask her. I know. What are you going to bring to the table, girl? What can you bring to Shepherd Creek Farms that Sandy and Mark don't like doing? Yeah, you can't take the fun jobs. No, you can't take the fun jobs. I'm just coming out to do kind of a evening check. It's not really late. We have to actually go out tonight. So Carissa's going to come and do the late night check tonight, but I just, I haven't been out here for a bit because I was with my sister doing books. Oh. Oh no. Um. This is not cool. Oh, wow. This is not cool. Oh my goodness. Just water everywhere, except for the center eye. So the problem is, uh, since the roof got blown off a week or so ago, uh, we couldn't put the chimneys back up. Uh, they want to do one final stretch on this tarp before they want to put any holes in the, in the top for chimneys. And what's happening is we need those chimneys to get rid of the, the excess moisture. So what, what's going on right now, our weather has completely changed. It was like minus, felt like minus 20, like three nights ago. So it gets so, so cold in here. All the hot air rises and then it gets stuck at the ceiling because it doesn't have chimneys all the way to the end now. And then like today it was probably plus five. So now all that ice and frost that was stuck at the ceiling has fallen. So my pens are soaked. I came in here mid-afternoon and it was raining. Like the barn, it was raining inside the barn. These lambs and these ewes that are lactating have to be dry because you can get mastitis in the ewes if they, because when you have wet litter, you can pick up bacteria as well. So I have to really be careful of mastitis with those ewes and the lambs can pick up pneumonia because they're so low to the ground that any of that bacteria in the ground um, can cause respiratory issues. So I'm gonna take a second. I'm sure Carissa was gonna do it tonight, but I wanna get started on bedding these ewes. The temperature's at a fairly consistent level now and I think most of the stuff has melted. So I think it's safe to say to bed it. I told her not to bed. It'd be a waste of straw until everything had melted. So it looks like everything's melted. Everything is soaked. So now, uh, not planned. <laughs> kind of wanted the night off, but I think it's just driving me crazy. I have to bed them. 
So it's not crazy bad because there's so much bedding, but you can kind of tell it's like a darker color than it usually is. But no good. Some of the moisture on the side walls is because sometimes the snow is sitting on the ledge. Uh, even some got inside, it just blows in in the cracks and it's melted. So some of this is actually from the from the side wall. It's not all from it's not all from the ceiling. The front halves up to the where the chimneys start, it's night and day. This stuff's really wet. And back there, it's actually not bad at all. I thought it would be the whole barn, but it's not. It's really just this is the wettest part, and in quite honestly, that's not where the animals are. I guess the good thing is I can conserve straw at the back, but I will have to keep this, this front half bedded, especially where the lambs are. It is amazing what a little straw can do. Even the lambs over there, jumping around, bouncing around. So I just, I just could not leave them another second being so wet. What I find is when you're lambing, you get a one track mind and you might do really, really well with your lambing results and you know, really low mortality and keeping everything alive and just getting, getting claustrum into the lambs, feeding the lambs, making sure everything's good. But those silly little management jobs like a dry litter that can wreak all these other problems that you just, you're either too tired or you're like, oh, it's not that bad. And it's, I find when you're tired and you're really just concentrating on lambing, that's the stuff that nips you. So I just, it's been such a good group that I'm, now I'm just forcing myself to like not cut any corners even when I'm tired. And, um, and in doing so, I'm, I'm really tired and really kind of panicking about it, but I just know going to bed tonight, I'm gonna feel a lot better about what's going on out here when I turn out the light. I'm about, I'm about halfway, uh, kind of where the curtains or the chimneys start, so I'm just gonna, some of these haven't been done in a couple days, so I'm just gonna top them up a little bit, but the back pen I bedded uh, yesterday and they're still pretty good, so it's not as bad as I thought, but it's a lot better now over here. I don't know if I, uh, even came back to show you. This morning when I took the bottle around, I actually got one quad. The other three that was on mum would not take the bottle, but I did get this one. So I got that one and the little black one's still alive and doing well. And Chris has been um, training them on the machine all day. So they should be, I think they should be good. So that's a little win of the day. Today, this morning, before I took off to help my sister, uh, I started my second pen. So here's the here's the first pen. So in that group there is around like 50, 55 or 56 ewes and their babies. And it'll be about the same in this group. The All the lambing pens were here with these girls in it. I took them down, made a bigger area. Uh, the problem is they do not have access to the water bowl. So that's always kind of the dilemma for these middle areas that start lambing. Even if I started lambing at the back, there's not enough to make it to the water bowl. So just for my flow, because I bring everything this way, they, they drop lambs there, I bring them into there, I record them, and then they drop into here. So it's kind of the flow of everything. It works really well. This is my only real downfall is having to pail water. So yeah, so I moved these all out. There's a few still with triplets. This girl has the triplets on her still. This girl has triplets. I can keep a really good eye because there's not many in this group. And even the quad, the one that had quads still has triplets with her. So I, again, will check them in the morning, have a bottle with me, see if any drink. If any drink off the bottle, I will move them. That's kind of, it might take me two or three days to actually find a lamb that isn't getting enough food because these mums might be productive enough. They've been doing really well. He's excited. Okay, so that's how that is done. This is the ewe that lambed yesterday. I did not get her recorded today. I'm gonna record her in the morning, but there's no hurry to get her out. And the lambs are doing really well. 
So I'll do those first thing in the morning and move her into this area too. I'll leave these up because there's no point tearing them down in case there are a few that are still gonna land, but I really think we're in our, I think we're in our reprieve, but there are a few that look pretty close. So I have no idea. There could be a few tricklers. What do you say, popcorn? Is that good? <laughs> 